Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Rust Belt Collector here, and today I've got a haul unboxing, if you will. Um, this is one that's really exciting, and I'm I'm excited to get into it because it's it's Halo related, and yes, I know I haven't shown off a lot of Star Wars related content. So here, check this out. I got a basically brand new 2000, I think, or maybe like 2002 reissue of the VHS Star Wars original trilogy. I got this at a thrift store for two bucks. It's cool. It's Star Wars. So now I've made Star Wars content on this channel once again. But that's not why we're here. This box is. I am so excited to dig into this. This was a purchase from someone over on Instagram. And his username is K It's Zane. So K underscore it's underscore Zane. And yeah, this is this is awesome. I'll link his his page down in the description. Definitely, definitely give him a follow, you know. And anyways, yeah, let's just let's just dig into it. It's it's Halo. It's Halo 3 specifically, McFarlane figures, and I am just I'm pumped. I've got a few of these in my collection. I had a few more when I was a kid, and since then I I just wanted to get more. Um, yeah, I I wanted to build up this collection, but unfortunately, compared to like Star Wars figures, you just can't find old Halo 3 McFarlane figures at, you know, toy conventions, toy shows, even like this, like toy stores, like the toy department and stuff. You don't find McFarlane Halo that frequently. So I have been trying to go through the secondary market online and Zane hooked me up with some absolutely amazing figures. So up first we have the red multiplayer EOD, which looks awesome. I mean, these guys are in amazing condition. He included all the weapons. Amazingly, they're not broken because these SMGs notoriously break right here where that little peg hole is because uh, McFarlane didn't really make these with some of the best designs. These these pegs were supposed to go in there. I'm not even going to try and force that, but the pegs were meant to go in there, and then there's a hole in the leg where that could, you know, slot there on the leg, just just for, like, you know, lore purposes. That's where the weapons are stored. But, uh, yeah, made the weapons very, very brittle. So I'm going to be very cautious with these. I don't want to pose them with their weapons just yet, but but giving an up close look here, the armor is amazing. The panel lining is amazing. This is like, in my opinion, Halo Three was where McFarlane peaked with their Halo figures. Um, the Reach armor was cool, but the articulation wasn't there. These guys have a decent range of articulation. It's you know pretty solid there with all the different points there and all that. It's also got the removable armor. And for the time, the armor didn't really fall off that frequently, which is really nice. Uh, the chest plates typically were what got loose the most. And this one is a little bit loose, but, you know, not so loose that it's going to just shake right off of there. So, yeah, this is, this is an awesome start. We have the red EOD, and I'm also going to be very careful because the wrist joints are the other joint that typically breaks on these guys. Um, they're not... They're not great toys. Um, I played with them as a kid. I actually had these and I played with them, but they broke very, very frequently. Just because he's on my desk for another video, here is the very first Halo 3 figure that I ever bought with my own money as like a, I don't know, I was probably like 12 or something. Uh, the Walmart exclusive EVA, and obviously I've customized him since then, but his shoulder pads broke off. I glued those back on. His chest plate was always loose, glued that on, and his crotch piece broke, so this leg is permanently only a swivel. That upper swivel is glued in there because the crotch piece completely shattered on me. So, and does, yeah, he's actually got both of his wrists, so that's, that's a plus. But as you can see, apart from, you know, the paint and everything, playing with these figures typically ended poorly. And there's even a peg in his back there that broke off, so... And one in his leg. Imagine that. Yeah, these guys were were cool. They were very detailed, but they were not the best play feature related toys. They're they're a little bit uh, brittle. Let's let's just say that. Reaching in once again. Oh, here we go. We have a gray Halo Three. I, I shouldn't even say Halo Three because all these are Halo Three. But we have a gray uh, Spartan Recon. One of the rarest armor sets, actually the rarest armor set in the base game of Halo 3. 
And yeah, you can get it pretty easily with uh, with the MCC now out on Xbox One. But yeah, you couldn't get this back in the day. Uh, this was a Bungie exclusive. This was armor that only the developers had for a while. And they would sometimes give it out to players that were in events and things like that. Eventually, as they were losing their license and handing it over to Microsoft, they did release the Vidmaster challenges. So you could unlock the armor through a very, very strenuous series of achievements. And many people did that. That was that was like another, like, I don't know, you could really brag about having completed the Vidmaster challenges, having having the recon armor. But yeah, now it's pretty common. You can get it through MCC right away, I'm pretty sure. You don't have to unlock it or anything. It's just in the game. So I don't know how I feel about that, but it's still cool to reminisce about those days when gaming and having the armor set while you're gaming really did have... Uh, status with it. It was really cool back in the day to just, you know, you'd see somebody running around with recon armor and you'd just be like, oh yeah, that's, that guy has, that guy has done some stuff in game to actually get that amazing. And yeah, you just don't, I just don't feel like you have that these days with so much monetization in games where you can just buy armor sets. It was cool back then to have that and have it be something. It was a, a status symbol. And this figure does come with a spike grenade, but I mean, I'm just amazed. None of these spikes are broken off. That is absolutely unheard of with these McFarlane toys. The The handle on the Brute Shot was broken off, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not terribly bothered by that. I kind of expected more stuff to be broken, to be quite honest. So I'm really grateful that you took such great care of these figures. Next up, we have a rogue, a rogue Spartan. And that's not, like, he's not a rogue or anything, it's just the name of the armor. And it's a very nice blue color. I love, I love this blue. I've never had a multiplayer blue Spartan, to my knowledge. Uh, no, I take that back. I think when I was growing up, I had a blue Scout uh, armor set. And I really liked that figure. He was one that, I don't know whatever happened to him. Lost track of it. Would love to have it now, but... You know how it goes. And yeah, he's got a little uh, plasma grenade there with the little pegs. The pegs I'm just too scared to even use, so I guess those will just be extra accessories. And he has a, a sniper rifle, which, I mean, just look at the detail on these weapons. It's amazing what McFarlane was able to do back in the day. And I really don't think that you can get this level of detail on figures today. Uh, I think it just costs too much in the market, and companies just aren't willing to raise their prices, so they drop quality, and yeah, I mean, just I just can't get over that. Look at that. There's paint wash, there's dry brushing, there's panel lining on the figure itself. All over the Spartans, each one has panel lining to really accentuate the sculpt, and they just look absolutely stunning. These are fairly small-scale figures. They're smaller than Black Series. They are... I guess like a five inch scale figure. So they're in between a three and three quarter inch and a six inch. But the level of detail is just, it's jam packed. It's all there. And I absolutely, I absolutely love it. Um, I need to do like a updated video. I did my, uh, my top 10 figures that I'm searching for in 2022 and all that. I need to do like a top 10 Halo McFarlane figures I'm searching for in 2022. Cause there are a couple there are a couple that I really, really want, and I mean, I guess I'll just list them here. There's a, a Mongoose that came out from Halo 3 with a purple and gray CQB Spartan. I really want that one. And then there's an armor pack that was red and white, and it also came with a red and white CQB armor set that you could customize the figure with, and that's the other one. Those are like my two grails for 2022, so... Hopefully somewhere in the in the mix of all the chaos and everything I'll be able to track those down. Reaching in here and oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, dude. You got to be kidding me. Oh man, he said he was including an extra figure and uh it was like an incomplete figure and I did not realize it was this. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um this is a Halo Reach McFarlane figure. It's the Gungnir Gungnir Spartan. And um, it is missing its shoulder pads. It's missing its like ammo belt across there. It looks like he had a shoulder pad here that's broken off. And I don't even care. I absolutely love this armor set. This particular variant of the Gungnir helmet is my favorite. It's got like the EOD fins on the side and it's got the tack light up there. And yeah, dude, thank you so much for including this because 
I definitely have some customization that I can do with this, um, either with just the helmet or with the entire body. I don't know yet, but this is an absolutely awesome, awesome armor set. I guess the chest plate might be glued on there as well, but I don't even care. <laughs> I don't. I, it doesn't bother me at all. And there's a plasma rifle. It looks like a... I'm going to say Halo 3 plasma rifle, but I could be wrong. That might be a Halo Reach one. And then it does have the Spanker rocket launcher with the uh, with the little extension there. That it, it pops out pretty easily, but that's meant to just be lore accurate, so it can fold in there or it can like slide out. But just, I mean, look at the level of detail. Look at the little fine print that's going on there. You could actually, if you got zoomed in really, really close, I bet you could read every single word that is printed on the side there. The detail on these figures is probably never going to be seen again. I'm I'm going to go out on a limb there, and unless you're buying like a 1-6 scale like Hot Toys figure these days, you're not going to get this at the price point that these figures were. Um, back back in the day, you know, I sound like an old timer, but back in the day, back in like 2015 when these were really popular, I would say I think they were between like 12 and $15. I think if you went to like Toys R Us, sometimes they would be like 15 and then if you went to like Walmart, they'd usually be like $12.99 or something. I could be wrong. I can't really remember what the price was, but anything under 20 bucks for a figure like this is incredible. Reaching in once more, this is, oh man, this is one of the ones that I was super excited for out of this whole lot. The CQB armor set is probably my favorite from Halo 3, and I've been trying, well, I can't really say that I've been trying. This will be the start of getting every single variation that McFarlane ever made. They made a few different ones. Um, off the top of my head, I can think of the red and white one that's like on my grail list. There's the the mongoose one, and then there's also a blue, a white, a steel, um, I think there was even a pink and a purple variation as well. So this one is the start of that. I'd love to get every single one. And it's also really cool that they did a couple figures of the CQB armor set with a shotgun because these guys are close quarters. They're meant to be a Spartan variation that would get real up close and personal with their enemies. And yeah, it looks... It looks cool. It looks amazing. Some of the panel lining might be a little shoddy on this one, but, you know, it kind of comes with the territory. Not every single one of these was perfect. I've even had a couple that had misprints and bad paint apps um, over, the, over my collecting years. But that just comes down to any toy line, you're going to have that. But I would say for the most part, McFarlane was pretty good about quality control. They were, you know, brittle. Like I said, the plastic was very, very brittle. But overall, um, they were they were great. They were pretty amazing. And we're actually going to move this guy. We're bumping him up to front row because that is my favorite figure out of this haul. And next up we have, ooh, yes, another blue one. Although this one is a slightly different color of blue. This is the EVA. And yeah, it's a really cool color of blue. I didn't realize that it was a different shade from the multiplayer blue that's back there with the rogue armor, but that is a really nice, almost uh, maybe like a little bit more teal, a little bit more turquoise blue, and yeah, he looks awesome. Uh, again, I don't, I just feel nervous putting the weapons in their hands, apart from like the shotgun and a few of these other ones where it looks really easy. These, I just... You can see the way the hands are shaped. I just don't know. I'm a little bit cautious. This figure looks absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah. And once again, dude, you kept these figures in such good condition. The joints aren't loose. The paint apps are nice and clean. And the weapons aren't broken, which is a huge plus when it comes to these McFarlane figures. And yeah, he can kind of dual wield that. I mean, he's meant to, but the way they molded these hands, pretty much every Spartan had the same left hand. It was just like a cupped hand to hold a weapon and it works it definitely works but it's not great however it actually is pretty serviceable with these plasma rifles so that's a plus that's a definite plus i like to see that and overall it's a really nice armor set i'm um, a little bit of background if you don't know this armor set was unlocked for completing the campaign on normal difficulty so this this was like the reward for beating the whole campaign of halo 3 on normal EOD was the legendary armor set, so if you beat the game on legendary, you'd get that armor set, and there was an elite armor set that would be unlocked if you beat it on heroic. So that's kind of cool. And then 
Uh, CQB was default, Recon, like I said, was super rare, and Rogue was a multiplayer armor set. You'd only, well, it's a helmet. You wouldn't, there was no like chest plate or shoulder pads for it. It's just the standard Mark VI body, and then the, the helmet is a, uh, is Rogue. So that was like reaching Lieutenant in multiplayer, I think. I, I can't really remember. Next up, we have the ODST, and this is another one of the multiplayer armor sets. I guess armor sets being very, a very loose definition, it's really just a helmet. There goes the shoulder pad. But yeah, ODST in Halo 3 was just a helmet, and it was for um, recruit. It was recruit level. If you were a recruit in multiplayer ranking, then you would unlock this helmet. And you know, it's kind of lame. They never gave us shoulder pads or a chest plate in Halo 3. Uh, even though, obviously, there were ODSTs in Halo 3, and then, of course, Halo 3 ODST, the game add-on, but, um, yeah, it's it's a cool helmet. I never really rocked this in-game just because there was no other armor pieces for it, so you kind of have to kitbash it with other armor sets, but, yeah, it's a cool figure. It's also just a very interesting color choice for this figure, like, uh, the, the pale yellow is such a uncommon color. In fact, I don't even know if I've ever seen somebody using this color in-game, but... Yeah, it's still a great figure. I think they released, once again, multiple variations of the ODST, or rather just the Mark VI with the ODST helmet, but they, they released multiple versions of this in different colors, including like purple and uh, blue, I think. I can't really remember. I, I used to be able to name off the different variations because I would scan all the different websites and like peruse the different forums just to see what was released, but I never actually got my hands on more than maybe three different figures growing up, one of which I still have, or rather two of which I still have. And yeah, I, I was pretty limited on how many of these I actually owned. The only reason I know like some of what, the only reason I really know what some of these are in terms, the only reason I really know what some of the figures were that were released is because, one, I look a lot on eBay for, like, lots of these figures and stuff, and so I kind of get a feeling for, the, for them that way. But I also looked online. There's a couple forums that documented every single release, and I've learned that way what was released, because growing up I only had, like, three different figures, maybe four. <laughs> so my collection was very small, and I kept most of them, which is actually kind of surprising. And yeah, that's one of the, unlike my Star Wars collection, I actually have a decent number of the figures from my Halo collection. Reaching in once again, and we're almost to the bottom, I think, oh, okay, um, oh my gosh, dude, no way, it's, no way, that is, oh my gosh, um, you did not have to include this too, the Spartan was a surprise, but this, oh my gosh, this, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> and this is the one that I've been wanting, like, I've legitimately been wanting this variation of the Viper. Um, I guess you must have maybe watched one of my videos where I talked about how much I love the Viper designs, because this is exactly the one that I was looking for. I, I, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm very grateful for this. This is an extra. This wasn't included in a lot. This wasn't something that I knew was coming in the package. This is amazing. So actually, a while back, I I think it was a JCC2224 video, go figure, I mean, not that he's ever been mentioned on this channel before, but there was a video where he talked about this particular Viper figure with the chromed out visor, and I went online on eBay and I was like, dude, I gotta get my hands on one of those, because it looks like a really solid action figure, and I bought a lot of, like, three of them, thinking it was this figure, and it was not. <laughs> I don't know if this is, like, the 25th anniversary or something, because... I mean, just look at that. It's got it's got wrist articulation and all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't know what version I got, but it was not this version. It was a dull visor. The wrists were fixed, like, all the way back to the gauntlet. It, it didn't swivel until way back here. But, um, yeah, dude, I am so, so incredibly grateful for this because this is exactly what I've been wanting for my collection. I've never had this Viper variation, and like I said, I was looking for it, but I never got it, and this is amazing. Dude, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Thank you so much. I don't know if you saw a video and you knew that I was looking for it or, or not, but this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect, and I am so excited to hopefully do some toy photography with this because this is, like, this is the best version of the Viper that I think we've ever gotten. 
Uh, maybe the classified beats it, but I haven't gotten my hands on a classified version yet. So up until I get that and I can compare it, this is the best version of the Viper we have ever seen. At least that I've ever seen. I mean, just hold on a second. Maybe we're not appreciating fully what this is. It has a shiny chrome visor that looks so, so good. I mean, that... Wow. This is just so cool. And I've never seen this one in person. It just from the video and like online pictures and stuff, this is the best version of the Viper, I think. It looks so good. The, the chromed out visor, all the accessories, the articulation, it's amazing. And all these accessories too. I had no idea that it came with like 15 different accessories. Not, not actually, but it comes with a base, comes with multiple different weapons, including a bazooka. Wow, dude, this is amazing. I, I know I said the CQB was the best part of this lot, but Honestly, it might be this guy now. <laughs> I'm going to be perfectly honest. It might be this guy. All right, so that <laughs> that was awesome. That was absolutely awesome. There's actually one more figure, though, so I got to dig in here one more time and pull out the final figure from this box, and it is... It's another doozy, I got to say. It's... I'm excited for this one, too. My goodness, this... I forgot that there was actually this many figures. That's... Uh, <laughs> I did. Now I want to be careful here because this guy's wrists are a little bit stiff and I just want to make sure that I'm not twisting them off and they're just going to snap because that's one of my biggest fears with these guys. Their, their wrist joints get kind of stiff and then you twist them a little bit too aggressively and they just, they snap off. I've had that happen a couple times. So hopefully, hopefully we're doing good here. We're not, uh, not breaking anything. That scared me. That really scared me. That arm was stuck and now it's free, but I was afraid that that just snapped off in my hand. <laughs> and that's exactly what I'm talking about. These figures, they seize up a little bit on some of the joints and then to break them free, sometimes you feel like you're going to break the figure and in all honesty, sometimes you do break the figure. So best to be a little cautious when uh, when when messing with these guys. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie, these figures aren't perfect. Um, and it's nothing against the seller that I bought them from, it's not that, it's just that McFarlane still had their issues, and, and still does, they're, they're not a perfect company. But uh, these figures were definitely a step in the right direction. There's still the brittleness to worry about, and unfortunately, like this hand here, just does not want to hold the weapon. And it's it's a hard plastic, it's not like a soft plastic. So I can't just flex those fingers out to grip it. It is literally just molded in such a way that he can't hold the weapon. So, you know, there's there's those downsides. There's issues like that that come up. But overall, you know, if you can get it in a position, maybe add some, like, sticky tack or something so the weapon doesn't fall out, it looks amazing as a figure. Like, the colors are super vibrant. The, the paint apps are super crisp. Even these little secondary colors look really crisp, painted over top. They look so good. It's one of my favorite figure lines ever. And it's such a shame that, uh, well, they just didn't fix those few little issues. Even as the line progressed, I think they still just never fixed them. And eventually they kind of got worse because they made the Halo Reach figures the way that they did. But yeah, there we, there we go. I definitely rambled quite a bit in this unboxing, but hopefully you stuck it through to the very end. And I hope you enjoyed it. I, I'm really excited to do some photography with these figures. I have not really ever done McFarlane figure toy photography, but either way, they're going to have an amazing spot on my shelf, especially that CQB and especially this Scout. These are the two ones that I kind of want to get every single variation of with the Scout and the CQB just being my two favorite armor variations from Halo 3. But also, dude, I cannot thank you enough for sending me the Cobra Viper and the Gungnir Spartan. They're, I'm just, I'm stoked. I'm so absolutely stoked to do hopefully some custom work with this one and then hopefully just some general toy photography with this G.I. Joe. It looks so good and I definitely got to track down more of these now as my uh, as my CQB falls over. But I definitely got to track down more of these with the chrome visor, because like I said, the ones that I got, I thought they had the chrome visor, but they definitely did not. They were some earlier version of the figures. Again, I'm not really up on all the different versions of G.I. Joe figures. There are so, so many. So I'd have to go on like yojo.com or something, track down what ones I got. But this this is it. That's the pinnacle. I, <laughs> there's no better Viper figure out there, I don't think. It looks so good, and I'm so glad to have it. So, again, thank you again for selling me all these. Thank you for including the extras. I can't thank you enough. It's 
awesome. Now before I ramble for any any more time, I'm just going to wrap this video up. As always, there's a link down in the description to my social media, my Instagram, my Facebook, Entertainment Earth, if you want to order or pre-order any figures. I will also link its uh, Zane, if I hope I got that right. I'm going to link his profile down there as well. You should check him out. He's got toy photography and stuff on his page. And as always, I hope you guys had a wonderful evening, noon, or night, depending on when you watch this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you all in the next video.